Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today we are going to talk about American politics, UBI, and Dusty's watch. All right, so let's dig into this. All right, so let's talk about UBI right now. We're in a really, we're in an amazing time right now. Uh, we're three months into COVID quarantine. Uh, America has burst into a new turmoil. Uh, that is sweeping across dozens of cities, major cities all over the United States of America. And at the same time, you know, we're, I'm looking back and looking, you know, we're now stuck with Joe Biden as our candidate against, um, against Donald, Donald Trump, which to me looks like putting up a corgi against a lion, right? It's just... He is going to get absolutely wrecked. I think he's got a 0.1% chance of, of victory. It's very frustrating. So I'm looking at this and I'm saying, what the heck happened, right? So let's look at that. What did happen? Well, one of the things that happened that we really need to talk about is uh, is Andrew Yang and UBI, right? And that, that's what the Dusty's Watch is about. We're going to talk about Dusty's Watch in a minute. And what Dusty's Watch is, is it's really a new, pared-down, leaner, better version of UBI that we might be able to get America to buy in on. Because it hard rejected. America did a hard reject on Andrew Yang and a hard reject on UBI. Right? So let's talk about that. So one, what happened with the 2020 U.S. presidential primary race? Well, for one thing, the most important thing that happened is Andrew Yang failed. Right? Now, I know what you're thinking. You're like, oh, Scott, I don't like to hear that Andrew Yang failed. He succeeded at creating a conversation. No, no, no. He failed to become president. That's what happened, right? And the reality is, I say that with you know as a badge of courage, right? When you fail at something epic, that's awesome. That should be celebrated. You know what I mean? We should stop celebrating minor victories and really start celebrating major failures. And America, this is tough. A lot, Americans don't want to hear this. They don't want to think about celebrating failures. Americans, gent, legit, do want to do not want to think about uh, celebrating failures. I have I have major failures in my life. I launched a product on my own. It was like a tech product. I spent eight months building it, and it went nowhere. It was a massive failure, right? Um, but I'm super proud of that failure. And the reason why is I was shooting at the moon, and I landed high in the stratosphere. You know, like, uh, and and that's the point. Like, really epic people, people who really matter, right? They fail. They fail. They fail. Right, it 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 it's important. Yeah, you know, like a leader who is worth following has some failures in his background, and this this is a this is a failure on the part of Andrew Yang. He failed. He failed to become president of the United States of America. Okay, uh, and UBI fa- and he failed to sell America on UBI. I get that. I really get why America rejected UBI. UBI is crazy non-intuitive. It is just hard to understand. Basically, just regular people. Here, here's a conversation with regular people. They're like, "We're gonna pay everybody a thousand dollars a month to do nothing, right?" Like that's what most people think UBI is. And uh, and I understand why UBI matters, and you understand why UBI matters. And if you don't, you can go listen to Andrew Yang's much better explanation than mine, right? It, it's a Wikipedia point at this point. I'm not gonna repeat it here. UBI is awesome, but the vast majority of people do not understand it, right? And Andrew Yang just failed at this epic task of selling the American people on it. So what I want to sell you on today is Dusty's Watch. Dusty's Watch should be a new American program which will bring UBI to Americans in a way they can understand in a much, much more pared down, smaller, leaner version that is sentimental and simple and important. Okay, so let's talk about Dusty's Watch. What the heck is Dusty's Watch, right? Well, Dusty's Watch is an artifact, a super important object that exists in the mo- in the 1995 movie Twister. Okay, now I am a huge film buff. I absolutely love film. Film is really precious to me, and I contend that Twister, 1995 Twister, is bar none. The the GOAT film, greatest of all time, the GOAT disaster movie America has ever made, okay? It's the greatest of all time disaster movie ever made. I love it. I'm a huge fan of this movie. 
I feel like it's a modern classic. Uh, and the reason why we're talking about it today is it just dropped on Netflix and I rewatched it for at least the seventh time, right? Uh, I watch it every time it, somebody puts it in front of me, right? I, and by the way, I was 25 years old and I went to see it with my wife and I think our youngest son was a bait, like was like a toddler at the time. And I think my parents watched him while we went to see this in the theaters. Great, great movie. Okay. In that in twist, 1995 Twister, there is a character named Dusty. Dusty is a storm chaser. Uh, Twister is about people who chase tornadoes, hurricane, chase tornadoes, tornadoes, excuse me. Because like this is like Midwest, right? So it's, it's tornadoes. So they chase tornadoes in order to understand them. And they're trying to get these like these little flying sensors to get sucked up into a tornado. So how do you get these flying sensors sucked up into a tornado so you can map the tornado and understand it from a scientific perspective? Well, you gotta drive your super cool pickup truck very close to the storm and then drive your pickup truck into the tornado so that you can uh, you know, unleash your scientific device and have all these uh, sensors get sucked up into the tornado, right? And so, all, so in this team of, uh, of storm chasers, which is Helen Hunt, I think it's Helen Hunt, and it was also um, Bill Paxton, and Dusty. Dusty is a member of the Storm Chasers team. He is a very important member. He's this really boisterous, very upbeat, very almost like manic. Uh, you, okay, actually, there is a term called Manic Pixie Girl. It comes from a few years ago. I don't think people use it anymore. If there's a Manic Pixie Guy, Dusty is a Manic Pixie Guy. He's this brilliant, courageous, wonderful storm chaser named Dusty. And in Twister, he is played by Philip Seymour Hoffman, who is one of my favorite actors. Uh, he died a premature death, sadness, sad face. I wish he was around. I loved his films. This, is his, this was the role I discovered him in. And I just love everything he's ever been in. And I'm a huge, huge Philip Seymour Hoffman fan. But Philip Seymour Hoffman played Dusty, okay? Now this is important because in the movie, we we are shown, there's a, it, it is literally five seconds of the film, but it's so important that it can, it can remain, it can serve as the anchor for a national American program for a modern, pared down, simple, understandable, sellable UBI, Dusty's Watch. All right, so here it is, okay. So in the movie, um, Meg is a character, she's, a, she's the mother of the main female storm chaser, the storm chase team lead, okay? So the female storm chase team lead, she has her mother, Meg, and, um, and at one point the storm chaser team goes to Meg's house she owns a farm and she feeds them literally steak and eggs. Like, mid-America, eat this protein. Uh, vegans can go uh, take a short walk off a long, uh, take a long walk off a short pier. Like, super protein, super keto uh, meal, right? And it's, it's incredible. It's a really, really incredible scene. So later in the movie, Meg's house, of course, is torn apart by a tornado. And lead female storm chaser has to go save her right and she goes down into the basement and she's trying to pull her mother out of this house that's crumbling because of the tornado which has already passed and they're just trying to pick the, her mother out of the wreckage right and what happens is dusty is standing on the sidelines and he and he you know because it's not safe to go in right and there's a point where they don't they don't know what's going on they don't know what's happening with this female storm chase lead they don't know what is happening um, with Meg, her mother, and Dusty. You know, he's just he's just a grunt on the tornado team, right? He's like, oh no, we got to do something, right? And so he he immediately is like, uh, he decides to plunge into this house that is crumbling because it's been knocked down by a tornado. But before he does. He does something absolutely critical. He actually takes off his watch and he hands it to one of his other teammates, right? And he says, here, hold my watch, right? And that's all that's said about his watch in this entire movie, right? 
But it's really important because Dusty was going into a house that was going to crumble, and he's about to have a life exit. He realizes if this house collapses on itself and he's in the basement, he will no longer be among the living. Okay, He will no longer be among the living. He knows this, right? And so before he enters this building, he said he, he pulls off his watch as he's running toward the building, and he turns back to one of his uh, compatriots, one of his team members, and he says, hold my watch, right? Now, why did he do that? It's really critical, right? What is going on with Dusty's watch, right? Well, here's the thing. This is an artifact, okay? When I go to, when I go to Target and I buy a coffee, a coffee cup, right, to hold my, you know, like a coffee thermos cup, you know, uh, there's so many good ones now. You can buy them thirty, sixty dollars. You know, for these great coffee cups that keep everything hot, fit into your car. You know, that that's just an object. It's just an item, right? But and and reality is, if I go right to Target right now and I buy a Casio watch, that's just an item. It's just an object, okay? But if my father hands me my watch, his watch, on his deathbed. And his father had given in that watch to him, and that watch is 110, you know, is 110 years old, or even you know, 75 years old. It's an artifact. It's an artifact, right? And so Dusty pulled off his watch because something special had happened with that watch, right? And it just it's amazing to me because I love artifacts, heirlooms, right? Some people like and actually I I think the better term is artifact. This thing is super special and from its position to him, it's like magic. He can't imagine losing it. This object, this item has to survive his life exit, right? It's that important, right? And um and we don't we don't it's not discussed anywhere else in the film. I just told you the whole part, right? But from based on the fact that he tried to save it when he was when when he was willing to lose his own life, right? We know it's an artifact, and it's really critical to understand this, right? So that's what I think Dusty's artifact should be: a brand new U.S. program where you can apply for government aid to save an artifact. So what is an artifact? If you're an American. Right, and your home has been passed down for three generations. It's an artifact, right? If your mother has given you a locket, okay, and that locket is worth thirty thousand dollars, right? But her mother gave it to her, and it's three generations old, right? And you have no money and can't feed yourself. You don't want to lose that locket, right? So what you could do is, so we need some kind of program that can save artifacts. Here's another one, right? Uh, 1969 Camaro, right? You're like you are going to college, right? And you don't want this, and you need money to go to college, and you don't you don't have a place to put this 1969 Camaro and wait for you for four years, right? None of the people I just talked about have the ability to not sell this thing, this heirloom, this artifact, right? They need to turn it over, right? And they, they and they have to sell it. Right? And then they have to get rid of and break this tradition. And this artifact just becomes an item. It just becomes an object to somebody else. Right, But our American government could save artifacts. They could say, okay, listen, come on in. We'll have an office in every state. You could tell us your sob story. And then we'll give you like $10,000, dollars 40000 We're not going to give it to you. We're going to help you preserve this artifact for five years. Right, So you get back on your feet. And after that, you got five years. We will help you. We'll store the 69 Camaro. We'll take the locket, right? And we'll give you $3,000 to go to college, right? Or, or actually $40,000 to go to college. It's a loan, right? And at the end, we'll hand you back your locket, right? So you're going to get a loan. We're going to take the locket. We're going to hold it, right? We'll put the 69 Camaro in storage for the house. We're going to pay your mortgage for five years, right? And the thing is, like, it sounds crazy, right? It is crazy. And here's the thing, in America, we are wealthy enough to do crazy. We are. We we are balled out, the wealthiest nation in the world. Nobody comes close, man. We got it all, right? You know, hat to hat to sneaks. Our gear is tight. Like, you know, we are there, right? As America, we can do whatever we want. 
right? Now, the reality is $1,000 you know, $1, a month for every American, that was going to cost $2 trillion a year. What would this cost? Maybe a trillion dollars a year? Maybe $500 billion, right? Either one of those numbers, you could throw it at, th at this. But like this, I think this is a much better UBI platform, right? This is, un this is understandable. And call it Dusty's Watch, right? Because then it'll, everybody will go watch you know, the movie, and there'll be a grounding for it. There'll be a conversation for it, right? And the other thing is human beings can understand this, right? Human beings cannot understand getting paid a thousand dollars a month to do nothing. They can't. It's clear they didn't. Like this isn't a debatable subject anymore. They did not get it. Like it like UBI as sold by Andrew Yang was hard reject on Yang, hard reject on UBI. It was done, right? It's got to be changed. And I think this is understandable. Like you're, you you don't get a thousand dollars a month, but they're saying, hey, when you get pinched in life and you have to give up the one thing you care about, we will help you in that moment. We can help you in that moment. And guess what? Right? Guess what? Here's the here's the other kicker. Right? You get a hundred of these in every state every year. Right? Uh, and you're like, oh wait, wait, this could be a ten thousand people. Yeah, exactly. Right? But may, put it on a lottery. At least you have a chance. Right? And this would be UBI. It would just be largesse of the government right? Just helping people, helping people who need it, who are really in a tight spot and don't want to end a three generation, um, tradition, right? This would be really cool and helpful and useful and powerful. And it's understandable. UBI was not understandable. This is no longer a debatable subject. Andrew Yang, nobody could be a better champion than Andrew Yang was for UBI. He did it all. He talked eight hours long on, on Reddit. He talked to uh, enemy territory um, interviewers. He talked on long form interviewers. He explained it in print. He explained it on radio. He explained it on podcasts. He explained it on uh, news on on news shows and chat you know on television and on the internet. Nobody understood it at the macro level, right? Just the weird, super smart political wonks like you and me, right? And maybe a few others. But the general people don't get it, right? It failed. It utterly failed. We have to own that failure with you. Be proud of that failure. And we have to change UBI. So pull those stupid letters off of it. It's now called Dusty's Watch. It's much smaller in scope. and But it's understandable and it's sentimental. And it's, you know, it's bound in uh, tears and... Um, and love, you know, like, and that's what we got to do. We got to make this thing accessible and we got to make it understandable and we got to make it better, right? Dusty's watch is better. What do you think? Do you think Dusty's watch is a better implementation of UBI? Or do you think uh, that we should keep banging our head against the wall and trying to do what Yang did? I'd love to hear your opinion. Let me know in the comments below. Please consider liking, subscribing, and have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful millennium.